today we're talking about something that's awesome. So I got really uh, a bit girly about this. Um, <laughs> So I received a email from uh, Norman Hossack. So Norman Hossack, make sure I get that right. <laughs> Norman Hossack um, developed uh, two things. He basically developed um, the Hossack suspension system, which we'll do one day. Um, but uh, not, suspension really isn't that exciting. Um, what is more exciting for me is the fact that Hossack made um, or designed, Norman designed a engine, a two-stroke engine. And I did a video on that about, uh, it was called the Real Square, the Real Square engine or something like that. Um, and that was basically a video about uh, Norman's design. And Norman actually has seen this video and he got back to me. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm trying to use this uh, video as a bit of uh, pressure. <laughs> I'd, uh, I want. I basically want to talk to uh, Norman and ask him a few questions about the design and all the rest of it. Generally, the story of how he dreamt it up, where it came from, what made him think about it, and the progress. Now, Norman actually made a um, prototype. There's a video on YouTube, his actual own channel on YouTube, of him um, running this little engine and all the rest of it. And I did the entire video, but there was one thing that I kind of missed that Norman did point out. And thank you, Norman, for actually pointing this out. It was one thing that I was going on about. At the time, we were talking about combustion, so we were on about uh, hemis and stuff like that. And I kind of focused in on that. But the one thing that I didn't um, really mention that well, or didn't ex um, basically uh, elaborate on, was the fact of the whole reason for the Hossack design. So the Hossack engine um, has a, uh, basically it's a piston and a con kind of combo. So, what Norman did was, is he obviously saw the problem with this, and he thought to himself, and I'm only guessing here, but this is, you know, we'll ask him, oh for fuck's sake. So basically, um, the port timing, the opening and closing of the ports, is controlled by the piston, where the piston is in the stroke. All oh, good. So Norman obviously had a think to himself, I'm, like I say, I'm only guessing here, but I think this is the way you go, is the fact that, your valve in a sense for a two-stroke is for getting reeds and for getting rotary valves and all the rest of it. Your valve that controls um, the cylinder filling is this piston. So he was thinking, probably thinking to himself, well, why can't we, you know, we've, we've got a cycle where we need inlet and then exhaust or exhaust and inlet, depending which way you're looking, uh, you're looking at it from uh, in the cycle. And, you know, so he thought, well, you know, why can't we have a piston that's at an angle so we can uncover one port, but the other port, that's a bit shit, but you get what I mean, the other port is closed. This is, you know, closed by the piston. So you could have your in coming in, and then obviously the reverse of this is you have your piston tipping this way. This is now closed and your exhaust is open to let shit out. So, um, there's a natural... Um, there's a natural source of this, not with a regular engine, but obviously if your piston and rod were solid, then as it follows the con rod, your piston would do this. So then obviously you have to think of, right, we have to make a chamber and a sealing arrangement that allows for this to happen, and bingo, we had the Hossack engine. And the beauty of the Hossack engine is it does exactly that. As the piston descends, it opens the transfer port first, um, would you do it then? No, sorry, other way around. As the piston comes down, what the fuck am I talking about? Uh, when the piston comes down, you can have the exhaust out, and then you close the exhaust off, let the inlet in, and then go up. And it's just this rocking oscillation moment. Now, there is a bit of a problem because it does give you this um, the loading on this piston um, or your balancing. So, when we try to balance reciprocating masses, um, the piston just goes up and down. So that's just basically let along one plane where this thing kind of oscillates. So basically the way to think about this is a Hossack engine is like the it's like the love child between a Wankel engine, a rotor a rotor engine and a two-stroke engine. It's kind of like the bastard love child of the two. 
where you have this oscillating going on like you do with a rotor um, but you still have a crankshaft well rot you know wankles still have crankshafts but you have a connecting rod and a piston um, but the other things that match as well is that the two sides and the shape of this entire arrangement you don't want a cylinder um, because of the ecliptic and all the rest of it and the way it basically unseal and seal itself so you have to have basically like a squarish piston or a basically you know four sides in a sense um, again very much like a wankel you know where you have a housing and then you have two end plates um, so obviously the other thing is you have to have uh, like apex seals basically and then side seals and so on what I'm going to do in the future and kind of what oh fucking hell what um uh, captured I think Norman's um, attention was the fact that you can also actually make this a four stroke um, where you can it, the benefits of having this rocking piston but one day we will build one because it'd be quite interesting um, because the top of your you know you already basically have a pent roof chamber so you could put the valves in um, and then you have this funky shaped piston with the apex seals here then side seals like this with this thing the balance like i said the balance is always going to be a nightmare i'm doing some solid works uh, models and analysis of how um what these forces look like and how you would balance them out and stuff like that and, and actual ceiling and all sorts um why would you want to do this a four stroke well the reason why is because this engine can be actually really quite narrow you know so from the side profile you'd have this piston with this rod because um we are using this square piston you can make this engine quite narrow then you'd have a plate in between and you can have another one and you can actually make a four cylinder um engine really really not ve that very wide you could also you know you can have a, a six cylinder you could go a bit mental with it there's other things you can do um the combustion like i said in the other video the combustion's a bit of a funky thing but there are little things you can play with and we'll go into the details of them later on when i've finished this bloody model and all the rest of it and then what we'll do is we'll put this into practice we'll actually build this thing and mess around but uh back to the whole norman thing you know it's the guys who develop and you look on you look on youtube and there are countless amounts of videos of people who have been dicking around in solidworks or fusion 360 or you know something like that some of these graphic design programs even stuff like google whatever it's called google sketch whatever it's called um and they come out with some fantastic new engine design and it's usually more and more complicated what i do like about the hossack engine is that it is very simple there's actually less parts there's no wrist pin you know you're getting rid of even more parts i do like the fact that it's this bastard child between the two and it does kind of you know uh, address one of the problems of this symmetrical porting so now you've got asymmetrical porting in the actual um, process the other thing about the hossack engine is oh no just you know talking to norman norman writing me an email is it's quite a big thing for me because you know all of the engine designs so let's you know your diesel cycle and the diesel engine petrol the two stroke um the four stroke petrol the rotary the radial engine um you know and then this hossack engine all these other guys are pretty much dead you know what i mean you might see stuff like the opposed piston engines and all that that's from fucking way back in the day 1910 or something was when that pattern was first put in you know stuff like the duke engine they've been around for fucking axial engines they've been around for donkey's years you know sterling engine is pretty much nearly the same setup the hossack engine to me is actually a proper um it ticks all the boxes you know uh, reduce components well tick you know sort out one of the problems that two strokes have symmetrical porting tick to a degree you know how well it works then we'll have to you know we'll experiment with it but um you know it's very very simple it's based on technology that we already have but that's the beautiful thing you know a wankel even though it was a different way of doing the process there was nothing magical in a wankel we're not burning you know fucking sparrows farts or anything it's nothing it, but it don't, i'm not trying to take anything away from the wankel design what i'm saying is is it was just rearranging the parts to do a different process or the way that you do that process is different and to actually be able to talk to one of these guys who came out with this idea i think it was 1974 or 73 or something he made his first prototype um 
to actually be able to talk to one of these, in a sense, you know, my little mini heroes kind of thing, is amazing. You know, even for him just to talk to me, it's just... I just love that, it really did make me go all gooey inside and stuff, because like I say, all the other guys are dead, you know what I mean? It, it's it's an honour in a sense to be able to, you know, for him to, to see my video and, and reply and have a chit chat about it and stuff. So hopefully, hint, hint, wink, wink, um, uh, normal will be able to take, you know, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, even if it's just a reply and an email with a few questions that I have about the story. Because to me, that's what's lost. We can have designs, we can have drawings and all that. It. What I want to really know and do a video on, hopefully, is where this idea come from and the steps that he went through. The story behind the creation, not actually the end product. Because the end product is, we can see it. He's made that little Perspex model and he's made one or two prototypes or whatever he's done. You know, just the story. Because as soon as Norman passes, that stuff, if not documented in some kind of way is lost you know it's lost forever to be able to go back and talk to the guys like diesel and all the rest of it and find out exactly what made him tick and what you know what process he went through and all the rest of it to me is really interesting any road so uh hopefully you know with a bit of pressure <laughs> um norman will get, you know get back to me and all the rest of it and um hopefully we'll answer a couple of my questions and stuff and we'll do a video on his reply if he says you know if he says that's fine and stuff Anyway, hope that makes sense. And yes, the the plan is is in the near future, in a year or so, um, to actually build some. Uh, not well, I'm not going to go small scale either. I'm not going to build a model of it. We'll build, you know, decent sized parts and decent sized components, and actually make an engine that can actually power something like a proper bike. Uh, I know the model, that, uh, the prototype that Nor uh, Norman did was he put in a mini motor or something like that well, we want to go a bit bigger than that and see what we can do with it and you know the best thing as well is push it see how far it goes if it fails you know and make a series of it where we basically do a failure analysis and find out why it failed and then look at ways to improve it to stop it from failing um and then we'll do we'll do the hossack original and then we'll also do um what i'm going to dream up in the next couple of months um a four stroke version and we can I'm going to try and pick out and see if I can find anything that has other benefits. Obviously the four-stroke version won't have the ports in the side of it, which actually helps us because the problem is, um, in a sense, with the um, with the Hossack engine the way it is with the ports in the side, is that, uh, in the side that he has, you know, he has done, is that you can't stack these engines together or otherwise, you can but you lose that kind of um, minimal cross section because you've got to make room for ports, transfer ports and exhaust ports to creep round and you'd have to do that for each and then it'd get wider and wider and wider where with a four stroke because we're coming in from the top there is also discussion about ports coming in from the side and using the apex seals as seals that would actually not be a bad idea either I'll go through some iterations and I'll show you what I've done eventually um, in the next couple of months hope that makes sense, I'll see you in a bit